Guys, today I have a TikTok master, an amazing person who actually, when I met this guy, there's very few people that when I just start, start talking to them, I get totally pumped up. But this man is one of them because he has an enthusiasm, a passion, not just for selling, not just for e-commerce, but for people and for getting together and for doing things really together and growing. And so it is my extreme pleasure to welcome Chico Guerra to the podcast today. Thank you so much. That was such a kind intro. <laughs> it's very true, dude. Like, Thank how, you. Okay, how, ma how many views have you generated on social media to date? I haven't actually calculated that, but I know for one of my accounts, I've probably done like over 100 million views. Yep, yeah. for one account. For one account. And on top of that, you have many videos you make for people who literally pay you just to make you a video. Correct, yep. What's the most somebody's paid you for a single video? Uh, I think $15,000. $15,000? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How long does a video like that take you to make? Like from like, hey, you get the job and you like to make it. I, it depends on the client, whether like in my head, if they're a key advertiser, so big brand, you know, big corp. Um, but, you know, if they're a big corporation, I'll spend a little bit more time, maybe like three to four hours. But normally I'm pumping out videos as fast as like five to five minutes to an hour. So here we go. So this, so you basically are paid in some cases, you might get a video for 10 grand, you bum bang it on an hour, bang it out in two hours. Mm -hmm. You're basically making anywhere between who knows on the range or even a $5,000 video, you make it in five minutes. Yeah. That's $100,000 an hour or something, like $60,000 an hour. <laughs> yeah. That's like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. As you were growing up, did you ever think you were gonna be making that kind of money on like, I don't know, on anything? To be honest, no. But when I was growing up, I had a camera in hand, like mm -hmm. since I was a kid. So I knew I'd be doing something with video. So cam were cameras, I mean, look, so you're, again, guys, just to put a reference, like I'm an old fart here in, in this video. <laughs> you're not <laughs> though. <laughs> I was born in 90, so I'm 33. And you were born in which year? 94. 94, so you're 29 right now, mm -hmm. right? So uh, when you're growing up, already internet and everything was already out. Like you're just, as soon as you can, as early as you can remember, you had cameras Boop. and videos and everything, right? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, just right out of the womb, they gave me a camera. <laughs> <Out of the laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Like Chuck Norris. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so what draws you to like want to have do videos and like want to do this? Because again, as you're saying, this started earlier. It wasn't like one day you said, "Hey, I like video." You've yeah, I'm carrying this. Yeah, no, I mean, for me, it was just fun. Like I, I really just have an extroverted personality. I really like to connect with people, and. First, when I, I remember first when I picked up like an editing software, it was iMovie. My teachers gave us like uh, MacBook laptops back in like third grade. Mm -hmm. And so I was just on that thing every single day, just like editing, like the dumbest video. Like I wanted to do like dunk videos, but I'm like the shortest guy out of all my friends. <laughs> so my friends would lift me up and then I'd edit me like getting lifted up and like look like I dunk something crazy. <laughs> But yeah, and then when I was in sixth grade, so I was probably like, what, 10 years old? I don't know. Um, I had like my first viral video on YouTube and I was wow. just like doing a dance like in front of a crowd. Stop it. Literally the, the like, yeah, the, the famous uh, TikTok dance or was it not TikTok? Was no, it, TikTok? it was YouTube, Crazy YouTube. Frog. It was called, it was the Crazy Frog, like was the, the, the. It was trending at that time. Yeah, it was trending and I hit a million views on YouTube and I was like, whoa, cool. But Back then, I didn't know you could make money off the platforms mm -hmm. like Vine and YouTube and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't take it seriously until, you know, like five or six years ago. Mm, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So you've always had a passion for video. And so I did your, when did your business like journey, your entrepreneurship journey, like when and how did that start? Mm. It's a good question. Two answers. I think it started when I was a kid. So I was talking to Luna and she was selling me her paintings this yeah, morning, yeah, yeah, which yeah, yeah. was sick because i was like dude that was me i was like trading cards with friends i was selling candy uh -huh. like when i was in elementary school all that stuff so that wasn't necessarily the llc business but that was like obviously started when i was young and mm -hmm. then i got started selling online back in i want to say 2017 like so right when i graduated college mm -hmm. i graduated college Came out with a degree. Only went to college just to play uh, football or soccer. Okay. And oh, so you're you're a pretty good soccer player. I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I would say like my friends are my friend who plays for the professional team okay. out here. Yeah. Way better than me. Okay. But no, I mean, 
like that was when my journey started. I just went to school just to play soccer because I didn't believe. For fun or like you were getting a scholarship or something or what? Yeah, I was getting paid to go. Okay. So I honestly probably would have never gone to school because I knew that I could sell. I knew I wanted to create something for myself. Mm. But like that journey started as soon as I got out of college and um, it all started on eBay and I was importing um, from China. So, okay, so you graduate college and what's your thought? You just go... I'm going to go to Alibaba. You saw like an ad or uh, right. somebody on YouTube said to sell. Like how, how did you just say, I'm going to start importing? Yeah, no, this is a good story. So I, I, to be honest, I started like went to a corporate job to sell because I, or to like get on the phone, make dials, cold calls. Mm-hmm. That got so boring within four so to that, five so months. That, so you took a, a corporate job. Yeah. First right out thing. of college. Okay. Cause that's what everybody else was doing. Yep. And it was super easy, you know? But then I got real tired of it real fast. I became the second top sales guy in the company. Dude, for real? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And then I was like, I'm making this guy so much money. Like they, it was like a five hundred million dollar company. Wow. And I was like, dude. And I was getting paid like forty. Could, could you share what, what the company that was or no? I probably can't. But okay. Okay, yeah. That's all good. But um, it was a in a uh, tech company. Okay. Yeah. But uh, anyways, and then I so after that job, I'd hit the gym and. At the gym, I saw an acquaintance from high school, and I was mm-hmm. like, yo, like, how you been, bro? I dabbed him up, you know? And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I've been good. I'm like, what are you doing these days? You know, it's been a while. I haven't seen you since high school. And he's like, oh, man, I'm just uh, selling vapes on uh, eBay. Mm. I was like, selling vapes on eBay. I was like, okay, cool. That sounds amazing. And he's like... That, I guess that's legal. Back obviously. then, it, I, back then it, I don't think it is now, but I don't know. <laughs> but he was like, yeah. And I was like, dude, how much are you doing? Like a month on that. He's like, uh, like 20K. And I was like... <laughs> Shut up. 20K a month on eBay. He's like, yep. And then right in that moment, it went cha-ching. You know, the eBay sound. I don't know if you ever sold on eBay. You never I mean, I, I actually sell a little bit on eBay, but yeah. I don't. I haven't been familiar with that sound. I've seen the sounds. Yeah, I've yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was just, the, you know, that cha-ching money sound. And I was like, what was that? He's like, oh, I just sold another one. I was like, get the... <laughs> You're kidding me. And he's like, yep. So then I was like, dude, like, how do I get started? You know, mm-hmm. like... In high school, because we had imported, like, you know, different things before, but, like... You already imported stuff in high school? Like, for yeah, school or for my, business? My, one of my friends was importing sunglasses, uh, Ray-Ban dupes, like, duplicates of Ray-Bans. Okay, he's a pirate. Was, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he was selling them in, like, in person to friends and stuff, and we would sell them, but I didn't know the import process. Mm. So this guy was like, yo, just Alibaba, search for a niche, boom. So I got started, I was selling like fad products. I was selling like cell phone cases that would hold your AirPods on the back, which actually sold really well. And I was doing that on eBay and then I sold like something that holds your phone at your neck and stuff like that. So I would bring all the packages that I would sell for the day to my office at the corporate job that I was working. And at noon was my lunch. I'd go slap labels on. I'd use the printer there because, dude, I come from zero. You know, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah, I yeah. don't have I any don't of the, the printer. Money. I don't want to do anything. Yeah. yeah, I was like, I'm going to take advantage of everything they have. And I'd take out, you know, 10 to 15 to 20 orders every day. And eventually it became so good that it matched my monthly mm-hmm. there that I was like, I need to go all in on right. this. So, yeah, I was selling fad products. And then I eventually got into Amazon FBA, which I don't do anymore, but... Uh, I know you will be. I will be. Okay. Yeah. After, so. after you meet me, after if you're not doing you. Amazon FBA, something's wrong with you. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'll be jumping back in FBA pretty soon here. But yeah, that was pretty much how I got started. Nice. That's amazing. And yeah. so from there, you got into FBA. Oh, and you, you did, from there you did the blood? Or you did something Yeah, else? yeah, yeah. So, okay. Yeah, I'll get into that. So I was selling fake blood mm-hmm. on Amazon back in 2018. Um, I don't know how I came about the idea. I can't remember why. But I was just like, oh, this sounds fun. Was it around Halloween or something or no? It was a, right like a couple months before Halloween. Okay. And I was like, dude, I, I got to sell fake blood. I think it's because I looked at the search volume. I was using a software, uh, Merchant Words. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I was like looking at the monthly search volume. And I was like, dude, I'm going to I'm gonna sell fake blood. And because it was good search volume. I can't remember what it was. And so I just went to Alibaba, found a listing, designed all the packaging. And then boom. And I just imported it. And within the first month, did 40K. And I was like, nice. Amazon's kind of nice. Because <laughs> I, I didn't have to go package. Right. You know? So I was like, this is not like eBay. This is better than eBay. You know? So I sold the fake blood. And then 
I got shiny object syndrome and I went over to drop shipping on Shopify. Okay, and how did that happen? So you, well, probably it was easier because the, the Halloween season died out and your probably sales went down. Exactly. And then you're like, okay, move on to the next thing. That's exactly. probably when you had it, right? Yeah, exactly. if you were making all that money, you probably wouldn't have switched. 40K October and then like another 40 to 50 November. And then I was like, oh, on to the next thing. Yeah. But what about December? Was December down or something or, or you just stopped? I didn't, imp I sold it all out by then. So I didn't re-import. So are you serious? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that's probably like business one on one. You know, like don't do this. So, yeah. What was, was it, but what were you thinking? Because I know this happens to people. There, they just kind of stop. Well, even when it's winning. Yeah. Maybe did you know you were like, hey, I'm leaving this behind because I'm going to something better, or you just did it kind of by accident? Like, how do you? That was pretty much that? it. Yeah, because on eBay, I said I'm leaving this behind because it's fad products. It's not a brand, and I'm going on to something better. Yep. And I heard about FBA. Then I did, you know, a seasonal product. And I'm like, I need to be evergreen. You know, I need to have something, mm. a brand. But you didn't even know that it wouldn't sell in general. I know, I didn't. So what if it wasn't evergreen? I, mean, I don't know. What if know. it was evergreen? I don't know. You never would have known. Look it up. <laughs> Let me know. Because November, that's already after Halloween. Yeah, it is a regret of mine. It was like a six-figure company in no time, you know, so. Six-figure in two months, almost. Pretty much, yeah. Like, well, you see, if, okay, so fine. So good, I understand. A regret, good. Point is... Guys, don't assume a product is not evergreen if you don't sell it and have it in stock. If you run out of stock in November, keep it in stock. December seems like a great time to have fake blood. I'm a living example okay. of this. Okay, yeah. Okay. So, 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 but at the time, what was your thought process? So I was like, you want to be not seasonal, right? And right. I was just like consuming tons of different content from tons of different entrepreneur creators, whether they're real or not. I, you know, it's hard to tell these days. But um, there was one guy online, and he was talking about dropshipping, and I was like, oh, sick! Now I don't have to like you know, put a fat mm. PO of money and, you know, just dump money into a, a product. Like I can test if it works first by running ads on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, you know, TikTok w wasn't doing ads back then. But the video creation w is got what got me excited, like creating ads for my company. And so TikTok was still around? TikTok was still around. What, what year is this approximately? This is 19? around 2019. Oh, 2019, okay. Yeah. So very, very recent actually. Yeah, so I was doing uh, drop shipping and I was drop shipping, what was I drop shipping? Black AirPods. Okay. Um, a few other things, but and those are real AirPods or fake AirPods. They were just black, fake AirPods. But it wasn't like with Apple coming name. from a very similar manufacturer in China. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't like it didn't have the Apple logo for example. Nope. Okay, yeah. just AirPod types. Yeah, pod. I called them Bat Pods. Okay, because Bat's black, you know. Okay, sweet. But yeah, drop shipping. You know, so I saw success with eBay. I matched my monthly at corporate. Then um, with FBA, I turned that almost into a six fig company. And then with drop shipping, I did like three hundred thousand the first year, and I was like, and that's not just just on the the little headphone things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So then I was like, dude, drop shipping sick, and I learned so much about ads on Facebook and Instagram. You know how to just so like, you walked away from Amazon entirely. Yeah, I shouldn't have <laughs> because you it's... didn't even put your bat pods on Amazon. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> What are you thinking? Because I thought like Amazon was gonna have compliance related issues. Oh, because it okay, okay. So basically, you're hiding from Amazon essentially, hiding yeah, from yeah. Apple. Yeah. But realize what they do is they send you cease and desist and you stop. But also, if it's not actually an AirPod, you might be fine. I mean, anyway. Yeah, I know. Just saying, like, worst case, you don't make any sales. You show it up, but then maybe you're thinking they're gonna they maybe go after your D 2 C shop or something. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so guys, realize this is a normal human thing. Yeah. If you're doing something halfway shady. You're gonna stop yourself from going after things. Yeah, I'm just saying this is this. It's a human thing. You go yeah, like, yeah. you didn't even try Amazon just because thinking there's a problem. Look yeah, at, guys, th realize you do this kind of stuff. If you have a product that's like that, and you ha realize that whether you know it or not, you are stopping yourself from opportunity because you're not fully clean. So that's why I always like no giveaways, no like keep Amazon everything super yes. clean because otherwise you're stopping yourself in ways you don't even know. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the drop shipping did amazing. And then I eventually, I wasn't, again, I wasn't selling a branded product. I was selling somebody else's product, you know, like Apple. But I thought it was bat, bat whatever. Yeah, but like. Did you trademark that? No, I did not. Okay. You can't, okay. I, I feel like with that, you can't really just like grow into a, you know, company, like an actual company. So. I disagree. You do? That's good. Dude, Anchor. You know Anchor? Yeah, but Anchor, who are they copying? Because I was copying somebody. Anchor's copying Apple, dude. They have cables and headphones. They have the same exact products. Yes, they that's have a good. headphone that looks a little bit different. And it's yeah. black instead of white, and it yeah, you yeah. Know, it's square instead of circle. And they're at one point six billion. Yeah, yeah. Just saying. I hear you. Just saying. Okay, but keep going. Okay, so so fine. So you didn't think it was scalable though. 
so that you switch. I didn't think it was scalable. Okay. So I've, it was just fine. Yeah. Sw- switching is fine. That's not a problem. And as you can tell throughout this story, I'm switching. And because I like to learn a lot of different things. And I'm like, okay, I feel like I learned enough. I probably didn't. But I felt like I did. Sure, sure. And I was like, I'm going to move on to the next thing. So with the drop shipping, uh, my friends and I were like, dude, let's go to China. Let's like, instead of Alibaba, let's just fly to China like and that. go to a trade show. And like, I like that. Because I love like... Going in and yes. like meeting somebody yes. and just like having that confidence that I have and just like, yo, I'm the biggest seller on Amazon. I'm the biggest. I, I'm in tons of retail store. Like I can do that. Mm-hmm. Like that's easy for me. And people you're get behind. Meeting the people. Yeah. Meeting the people and then showing them like my enthusiasm, history. Hey, yeah. my history, my drive, because I really do have that. But sometimes you got to like, you know. You got to put smoke in mirrors, you know? So that was... Some embellishment. Yeah, exactly. Embellishment, that's a good word. So that's how, that's like my friends and I decided we're going to fly to China and we're going to just like find a product that's either trending or like that we feel like we can make trend. And now in this case, when you're saying friends, it's multiple people or like... Yeah. Did you have, did your plan, was your plan, you all start different businesses or you wanted to actually partner with one of these guys? Yeah. Both of them? We wanted to partner. We wanted to partner. Is it three people? Three people it started out with, yeah. So, So me and the two other guys. Yeah, and um, yeah, because one guy had ran a successful Kickstarter campaign, mm. and we saw that as another way to launch a product okay. idea because the the community on Kickstarter is like crazy. Mm-hmm. They they love new products, and so we're like, dude, let's fly to China. Let's see if we can find any new products. And basically, if nobody knows this, like flying to China is actually great. It's like people think CES is great. No, CES happens in China. It's garbage. First. Yeah, it's garbage. I mean, in comparison. Yeah, because. Everybody that's at CES is either rebranding a product that they went and flew to China for, or they're like, this is the one that we are already bringing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so we flew. So you really went to the Canton Fair? Went to uh, a different one. It was in Hong Kong. Really? Yeah, because everybody goes to Canton. But that's true. I but went did, to, have you been to Canton Fair? Yes, I've been like six times. Dude, you could you can go there a hundred times and you won't see every booth. No, like you I won't. mean that that's the thing. So I kind of feel like every even though everyone's been there, I think it's a great opportunity. And but I think okay, you'll have gone. analysis paralysis too, like going there. So much stuff, huh? especially if you've never started a business and you're like, dude, what industry vertical do I want to go in? You know, like kitchen, gadget, tech, whatever, like fitness, mm. like. You but Hong get, Kong too. So which was the what's the Hong Kong fair? Uh, it was global sources. Huh. So these guys are trying to just like you know. Go head to head a little bit with, with the Kenton Fair. Yeah, they're trying. Yeah, okay. trying. I haven't even heard of them, but now I have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it seems to be more trading companies that okay. go there, which is not, not nothing bad against trading companies. So, yeah, we flew there. Uh, we landed, and it was cool to just be, you know, over in China and like see, you know, the whole landscape. But it was mind blowing, especially for you know I was twenty three, twenty four at the time, and I was like, dude, this is sick. Like, it was just opportunities upon opportunities people had some of the craziest products they can build amazing products they just don't know how to market Mm -hmm. and i was like oh i feel like that's what i'm good at is like you know i can just make it discoverable for people so um when i was there i found what i have now my shark tank brand which is called zoom so boom shark tank (laughs) yeah so so out of all the stuff what happened what happened that drew you to this the the skates these like Hoverboard skates, is that what we call them? Yeah, like, we call them Zooms because okay. I want to brand everything mm-hmm. that comes out of my mouth for the company. Sure, sure. Um, but yeah, we, I was just like visually drawn to it. And I, kn- I know v- like visuals can like, obviously they get everybody to look like the Cybertruck. Everybody's looking, everybody's taking videos. The same thing with the Zooms, like everybody gets like attracted to it. Like if it has the right appeal. So mm-hmm. I was just like, dude, I think this could be the next big hit. And And, and so how like... Was that the be- how how many days did you spend out on that fair? Uh, we were, I think we were in China for two weeks total, but I probably were there for four days. Okay, and so how long did it take you to be like, this is it? Like they wanted to, dude. Two- I, I, it was probably within the first two days. Yeah, yeah. And you saw it, and you said, okay, this is like top, and you kept looking, kept searching, whatever. Or you were like, that's it, I'm done. This I think it was that's it, I'm done. But let's check out a few okay. more because I felt like I could do like a hundred different products and a sure. hundred different verticals, but. I was still brand new to selling pretty mm-hmm, much. So mm-hmm. yeah, but we la- we decided to go on that one and then we launched it on Kickstarter. And the Kickstarter didn't blow up. It wasn't crazy. But what was the revenue? It was like twenty five K. Twenty five K. Yeah. Okay. For, it wasn't crazy. You, you, you started like fifty K super fast and the Kickstarter campaign is how long? It was a month long. Okay, a month long. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it wasn't amazing, but um I still felt like I, I had a vision behind it. And now you're partners with two people. It's three people now. No, I 
At, at the time, yes. At the time, I was partners okay. with three people, and um, we launched on Kickstarter. Shark Tank is calling us, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, so the Shark Tank was an inbound. It was an inbound. You launch on Kickstarter. Very rare. And they call you. Very rare. Every well, Shark Tanker I, I talked to, they're like, they called you? Yeah. And, and, and why? What did they say? What was the phone call like? So they were blasting us with emails, Facebook messages, Instagram. But I think it's a scam, you know, because everybody else like that sees you online is like, it feels like it's not real, you know? Mm. So I'm like, but the guy's like, please, he finds me on LinkedIn. He's like, look at my LinkedIn profile. I'm real. I was like, dude, you could just create a LinkedIn profile, you know? You wrote to him though. Yeah. You told him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, give me a call. And I was like, okay. And he called me. I'm still friends with him to this day. We have lunch anytime I go to LA, but he was like, this product is going to be amazing. Like it would be so good on the show because he, had, he was with me in the same boat, visual. Mm. He's like, it's so visual. It's so appealing. It's going to be fun. And you, he's like, you have a fun personality. And I was and like, he saw because you were in the Kickstarter video or what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I just, I bring my energy anywhere I go. So he was, he was cool. Yeah. That's an NBC employee. Uh, ABC. ABC. Sorry. Yeah. 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 I don't even know. If that's yeah. I don't even know who they're owned by, but somebody. Okay. So his job was to find people like yeah. a scout. Yeah. And he's like, Chico, you're it. Yeah. So they, okay. So you, you, you brought it to you. Mm -hmm. And so then you accept, like how, how long did it take you from them, him calling you and you, you know, agreeing, Hey, let's do this to then getting on the show. What was that like? Yeah. So it's about a six month process. So we got called in January and filmed in June. And, um, yeah, it was just a lot of just red tape, legal work, NDAs, yada, 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 you know, stuff like that. Okay. And then you filmed in June, but then when did it go live? It went live, uh, 2020, October or January. So right before COVID. So that's, oh, wow. Yeah. And how, like, how, what's that? When did you, how long is that from the time that you got contacted? Uh, from, from June to. Oh, it was June. So, oh, no, like, when like did... first the guy reached out to you. That was when? Right. That was January. Okay. So it was one year, basically. Mm -hmm. Six months to record and then another six months to release. Mm -hmm. But okay. it's never guaranteed. Right, never going to. They might record you, and then you never, you never go up. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Do they, you know? You don't know actually. Dude, it you goes don't live. Know. That's it. It's actually scary. Yeah, because they were, they told us, yeah, you know, we get about like 200 entrepreneurs or business owners out here, and probably only like, I think it was 40 percent actually air. Okay. And I was like, okay, shoot. So. I mean, that's 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 a pretty good amount. That's almost yeah, half. Yeah. So in my head the whole time, I'm like, what can I do to make myself either like, super dumb. Or super smart. Which way did you go? I didn't want to do eat, be in the middle. Because yeah, I'm like, sure. I have to be on air. You have to have a, a polarity. I went super dumb. You went super dumb. <laughs> I'm, I'm good at that. <laughs> is that why the episode is like that? No. Yeah, I mean. For real? You were you were acting dumb? Intentionally. A little bit. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, I mean, I've seen the episode. Yeah. Okay. Was I dumb? At, you know. <laughs> you can say, you can say. I mean, I, I didn't think so. I thought yeah, there was a lot of like, uh, e yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, uh, I don't know. I thought they were just maybe caught you off guard, but you were kind of just doing that on purpose. Somewhat part of it. And the other part, I think I was just kind of like being at Hollywood studio like that. I was like, whoa, you know, like this yeah. is all these lights and all these cameras. I was, plus I was talking to billionaires, you know, like I felt like I was just, you know, I started off, you know, doing eBay, Amazon, mm -hmm. FBA, drop shipping. I was like, I just found this product in China and you guys contacted me to come here. So like, why do you want to invest in my company? So you were, you were just shocked at why would they even want to do it? But yeah. you made a special pitch. So you talk, so, okay. Up when you went up to there, you'd already been selling after Kickstarter. Did you get sales after the Kickstarter? Right. So it took forever to get our, um, our first like inventory in because, uh, our factory was like, dude, you don't have enough money to order an actual like like MOQ pretty much. And mm. I was like, minimum order quantity is like 500. And I was like, oh, well, we probably only have enough money for like 100, you know, or something like that. And then I was just like, dude, please. I was like, you guys met me. You know me. I need to make this happen. And so they made it happen. And it's been like really cool just like to have that relationship over the years. Just like they know who I am. They, they, you know, they use some of the things that I've got us into for their advantage. But it's been like, other than that, like they made it happen. And so Shark Tank was like, yeah, we won't tell you when you're going live uh, unless three weeks before. And I was like, oh, shoot. Okay. But they do tell you three weeks before. Yeah. Oh, okay. But for somebody who has like a, you know, you 40, know. You have, 40 you have day lead units. time. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a hundred units already ha sold for Kickstarter revenue. And so then I had to 
figure out a way to. So you didn't re- get you didn't get back up and selling before the episode aired. Well, because we were waiting for production to pretty much land. So when mm-hmm. we when we filmed in June, we hadn't even fulfilled our Kickstarter by then. Oh wow. Yeah. So you had no sales really. I mean, you had Kickstarter sales. And that's yeah, it. but that's it. And so they were like, "This is nothing. You're not a company. You're zilch." And I was like. I know. I was like, but you guys invited me here, so, you know. But I didn't say that because I, I knew if I said anything like that, they would have just cut yeah, out. Or, exactly. Yeah. So but, you said, like, you're right. I'm, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm a nothing. Yeah. I'm, eh? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to start a business. And okay, it was but So you had a vision. You shared with me your vision that you shared on Shark Tank, which they did not air. It was crazy. To make themselves look good. So yeah. what was your prediction that you said live- on the Shark Tank that they yeah. deleted. I re- yeah, I really do wish they they aired it because it, it, this part would have made me look smart. But this part was, I because at the time, I had jumped into TikTok. 2019, it was, I think, February 2019, March, February 19. I was like, oh, we got to do TikTok. I was like, this is a new sick platform. I know it's like, just impressions are crazy. Especially back in 2019, mm-hmm. you could get whatever you want. Was it bigger then? Uh, like it was just it? like, they were Easier. just handing out impressions mm-hmm. like, you know, like just free money pretty much. So I was like, we got to do Kickstarter or we got to do uh, TikTok. And um, I think one of the questions the investors asked us, they were like, you know, what is like your selling plan? How do you expect to, you know, beat all the other sellers who are already in this category of hoverboards and things like that? And I was just like, we're going to do TikTok. And they're like, TikTok? Like TikTok is like a dancing platform, a dancing app. <laughs> and I was like... It is now, but eventually it's going to grow. And I was like, I know it's going to grow into something else. And they're like, they're like, yeah, you're not going to get sales off of TikTok. And I was like, okay, well, yeah, I, don't, I didn't know what to say. So at that point, so if they played that and they aired it, they would have made themselves look absolutely dumb. I think because so. TikTok now did like 30 billion in sales. Yeah. From, from TikTok yeah. alone. Yeah. And they literally told you TikTok won't work. So talk about, listen, guys, it doesn't matter who your naysayer is. Mm-hmm. Could be a billionaire. They could be totally wrong. Yeah. If you have a vision, you stick to it. And in fact, you did end up selling a lot of these things through TikTok. Yep, I did. So you might have been acting dumb, mm-hmm. but your prediction was brilliant. Yeah. And if it would have aired today, everybody's saying, dude, this guy was a, a prophet. Yeah, yeah. This guy knew the future. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. So it was cool. Um. So back in 2021, that's kind of when the journey of TikTok started. Like I had my previous. So, so, so 2020, well, the, uh, Shark Tank aired in 2020. Right. And so then that year. Oh, sorry. 2020 is when I was really okay. pushing TikTok. Okay. Um, I had bought out the, the third guy. He was like in it, but not really. He was kind of focused on his other company. Mm-hmm. And then the, the other guy that I was with, uh, I bought him out like mid 2020. Okay. And so it, I just became a solopreneur mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on it. But the impressions that I was driving was crazy. Like, and it was hard because back then there was no such thing as what we see now, which is TikTok shop. Mm -hmm. But back then it was like, I had two phones, still have two phones, but I was showing people how to go to my link and my website, how to use a pay over time method, you know, like a firm after pay or something like that. Because people are like, oh, these are so cool, but I can't afford them. Or these are so cool, I really want them. And I was like, guess what? You can actually buy them. If you go to our website, go to this part, boom, 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 put in your you know information, and it's going to give it to you for $30 a month. That was driving me so many conversions. Wow. And I was doing that on live stream. So I'd post a video, it'd go pseudo viral, maybe it'd go viral. And what does that mean? Like, what is it, what kind of impression are you talking about for a... Pseudo viral is probably like 50K to 100K yep. to 200K. And then viral is probably like a million plus. So it would go pseudo viral, but... I know that the algorithm wants you to have people stay on the app longer. So as soon as it, I saw like a video start getting traction, I'd go live and I'd start showcasing my skates mm-hmm. on live stream and people were people would just jump in. I'd have like 2000 people in my live stream. Wow. Yeah. So so okay, so here's a let me see if I get the strategy correct. Yeah. When a video starts going viral, those views are happening live. Mm-hmm. Um, like they're happening as you see them. Yep. If you go live, when they're watching the video, do they get, hey, this person's live, go watch them? Yeah, it's blinking on the screen, letting you know I'm currently live. So that's how you get live viewers. Yeah, you have a video that's not the only way you, you get live re- viewers, but it's a really good way to like capture even more viewers. And I don't know what it was back then that like just like thought this, but it was just in my mind. I was like, I need to go live. And mm. I was like, I need, I need to talk to these people. I need to like tell these people to buy this thing. 
and it worked really well. So I like back then it would do like 40k a month, which was great, like mm -hmm. on the virals, mm -hmm. and I was like, sick. Like this is my That's this is gonna be my baby. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. you're gonna tell the sharks to like yeah, yo sharks go go eat yeah. go eat mud. I don't know. Go pound sand. Yeah, pound yeah. sand. There you yeah, go. yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like TikTok alone with no other marketing channel was making you mm -hmm. a a sizable amount of money. Exactly. And the cool thing was, is, you know, I was pretty much still a broke college student. I loved burning cash mm -hmm. for fun. Like I was just burning the cash either on like a new business idea or like, you know, just like, <laughs> I don't know. Cause I was like, oh, I'm going to spend way more money on ads. And sometimes the ads wouldn't convert. And I'm like, mm. oh, there goes all my money. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, yo, TikTok take, loves you. TikTok was TikTok like, loves you. Like, TikTok's <laughs> like, here's, well, take your money. here's free impressions. And that's why I love TikTok is like, if you can make really good content, they will reward really good content. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, I don't have to pay, you know, a hundred dollar CPA for this three hundred dollar, five hundred dollar product. Like I can just like spend my time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears on making a really good video. And if that sucks, I'll keep doing it again and again and again and again. And so like, you know, it's been the the course over since I was a kid holding a camera to like now figuring out like what works on TikTok's algorithm to actually like find a good performing video and i'm still learning still yeah. learning that stuff yeah. yeah learning but again all the masters always learn yeah keep learning you yeah. know what i'm saying no matter where you're at you there's always things to learn yeah so um by the way if you want to see like viral videos go to chico guerra's tiktok yeah and just go and search because yeah. now after that success with your product mm -hmm. tiktok then contacted you yeah you not know, to do private videos mm -hmm. is that how you got is that how you got into doing videos for other people tiktok yeah. literally said yo you're yeah. amazing yeah yeah. We'll give you money? Like, yeah, how yeah. Is that? yeah, so they have a program that um, that at the time, back in 2022, it was, they started it in 21, but, oh, sorry, they started it, yeah, I think in 21, but they contacted me at the end of 2020. No, they contacted me at the beginning of 2022, but I didn't see anything. Like, I, I usually glaze over anything that, like, seems scammy to me. Mm. So they contacted me in 2022, but I started doing it at, at the beginning of 2023. Okay. And they're like, yo, we have this program where you'll make videos for our clients that, you know, spend money on ads and you'll take a percentage of their ad spend on what they put behind the ad that you create. You don't get any flat fee. Some you will, but most of them you won't. So you're incentivized to make a really, really good performing video. And I'm like, that's me. I was and like, sometimes you get a, sometimes you get a flat fee and sometimes you don't. So sometimes it was only rev share. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But I'm all down for the rev share more than anything because I'm like, Flat fee, it could have been, you know, maybe they paid me $500 for a video. That could have been a $5,000 video. That's right. You know? So I was more down for the rev share. Okay. And so, yeah, I mean, at this point, I've probably collaborated with, like, over 2,000 brands in, like, <sighs> different verticals. Like, from gaming to dating to, uh, you know, money to finance to, you know, a lot of these uh, companies were digital products. But recently, they started rolling out, you know, having physical the products TikTok on there. Stuff. Yep, TikTok shop stuff. So... Um, what is your formula to make a viral TikTok ad? Yeah, it's a good question. I think it really comes down to what already works in that vertical. Because I am like, I love video games, but I haven't played video games in a while. You may, maybe I'll play with my buddies every now and then. But I'm like, dude, how do these video game content creators, because I'm not a video game content creator, how do they speak to their audience to be like, yo, this new game's out, download it? Mm -hmm. I had no idea. So. What I did, like what I did with my previous businesses was buy a software that looks at existing performing ads or previously existing performing ads and look at, you know, maybe the scripting, how they filmed it, the framing, the shots, all that. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to take stuff from there. I'm going to take stuff from what I know that I think works. And I'm just going to combobulate it and, you know, combine it together. So mm. really it's just like, it's the remix strategy is what a lot of video creators call it is like, you know, good artists steal. I, I can't remember the, the quote, but it's like good artists steal, great artists copy, right. I think. And so that's pretty much what you're doing is like, how can you steal that, but put your own little mix of whatever that video might be. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much, I feel like anything with business yeah. in general too, you know? And then when you make these videos, how, what about the time spread? So like mm -hmm. length of time. That you know, I've heard over and over the very beginning of the video is everything that matters. Like, do you focus extra amount of time in the first how many seconds, or you kind of 
just put out a video and you just frame it on something. Right. Yeah. So I think the the hook is the most important part because people are just, it's so easy to just go like that and swipe and swipe and swipe. So how can I have your attention for the first one and a half to two seconds, mm-hmm. you know, that'll get you to like even see what the heck I'm talking about. So that part I like, I'll probably spend the most time like figuring out, okay, what do I want to do to make this video go, you know, viral or perform well in terms of conversions for a business. So that part I'll spend, you know, I I feel like every single day I'm spending time on that. I'm just watching other videos. I'm saving videos. I'm just, that's, it's like I live and breathe it just mm-hmm. for fun. Like for me, I like it. Yeah. yeah. So the first two seconds really is like the, the key. Yeah. So, so you maybe spend half your time in the first two seconds and half the time on the rest kind of thing? Yeah. The, the rest of the part is just like, okay, what are your key selling points? You know, what do you want me to get across? Or is it, do I have creative freedom? And then that call to action. That call to action is everything. You need somebody to subscribe now to the Aaron Cordova show and you need like that conversion basically you need to like you need to tell somebody what to do like because people people are dumb so yeah, like yeah. they okay so here we're gonna do a live test right now yeah okay you have this milk frother okay i ho- pretend it's on and it makes noise okay yeah, yeah. this is otherwise <laughs> damn i should probably take advantage of it with batteries yeah but actually i have the little batteries never mind i have the little batteries okay this little battery one do you mainly sell battery ones or rechargeable I have ones a rechargeable one, but these are our main sellers these sell okay. way more Oh, yeah. the ones marks. Okay, good. So we're going to do a live demonstration. You're yeah. going to make a TikTok video on the spot, no preparation. Okay. You're going to sell this milk frother. You're on TikTok. Yeah. What do you do? Let's see. Uh, so I need some milk, obviously, and yep. some cappuccino or something. But I'll just be like, uh, I'll whip out my phone, and off the off the dome, I can get it. I'll just be like, this is one of the most viral, this is one of the most viral products on Amazon, and it's coming to TikTok shop. And I'll be like, boom. It is a, and I'll probably have my tripod yeah, holding yeah, up, yeah. and I'll just be like, the reason why it's going viral right now is because it's an integrated milk frother that can, you know, that can, what is this called? Rotate. That can rotate at any uh, direction that you want. So you want to hold it like this and treat it like a, like a Vitamix, you got it. If you want to do it like this and treat it like a normal milk frother, you got it. And then I'll just talk about. The RPMs on this, the repetitions per minute spin so fast that it's going to make your milk super foamy, yada, yada, yada. And so you'll have the most smoothest tasting milk in your cappuccino. So if you want to get one right now, make sure to hit that link below before it sells out. Like something mm. like that. I don't know. So that first second was, this is a viral video. It's like, boom, you got to hit them. You got to boom yeah. and pinch. Like this father's going to change your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that yeah, this second. is the most so viral. Like, that's your, that was your loudest, at least from what I noticed. Like, yeah. Your biggest, like, loudest hit was at the very first, like... Yeah, this is the most viral product on Amazon that's, like, that I just found. Like, I found it. Like, you know, like, I didn't get sent it, you know? Right. Because if I got sent it, they'll be like, oh, it's an ad. Yeah. But if I'm like, dude, I just found the most viral product on Amazon. And even if you were sent it, you still find it. Yeah. I mean, technically, it's not a lie because, yeah. like, someone sent it to you, like, oh, I found it in my mailbox. Oh, yeah, I felt... Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm serious. It's not a lie. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. I, f- I, f- I found it on the desk. Like, yeah. <laughs> so... But I'll come up with different. I mean, if that if that one doesn't work, you know, I'll try it again. So, but 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 a brand when they hire you, you really make them one video, or you give them like variations. Depends on the brand, you know, and the budget. But I'll just be like, yo, like if you just want one and done, we'll do it. But there's been some brands that they're like, yeah, we'll A/B test some of your variations. I'm like, cool, let's do it. And really, it all just comes down from what I've seen is like, what is that hook? You know, Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. like because you need that viewer retention in order to figure out what the heck you're selling. Right. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Okay, so you're doing the brand video. So if someone wants to work with you on brand video, how do they find you to just work with you? Because look, I'm, I know some people... So actually, before that, let, let me just pause for a second. Hold your horses. Yeah. What is the most revenue? Mm. Or like, uh, maybe if you cancel the most, like a big account that spent money with you and how much like, did they make with one video that you did? Yeah. 15K, right? No, 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 no. How much did the brand make? Oh, shoot. <sighs> they probably made like three hundred to 400000 300, 400K. Yeah. So you're talking about spend literally 4% of your revenue mm. on a video that's yeah. going to kill. Yeah. And it'll give you a great return on your ad spend. Yeah. Right? So if someone says, yo, I want a video like that, and maybe they want to do the rev share, they want to do Flaffy, they want to do something, and they have a product, how do they reach you for you to do something for like that for them? They can go to my website. Yeah. Which what, is, is uh, garax.co, not com, co. Why do you got a website so complicated though? I'll you put know, in the links. I'll put in the links. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't know. I think I, I wanted to sound like Gary V, Vayner X, and I was okay. like, Guerra X, X, X. is kind of 
Gerber but I was like, cool. I feel like I should just do ChicoGuerra.com instead. But could be. And it is available, but nobody steal it. But <laughs> get it before that I'll buy it right now. Yeah. yeah, you should buy. You should buy. I mean, it's like fifteen, 15 bucks. bucks. Yeah. You get it, yeah. You should get it. Uh, but okay, fine. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna hate on your name. It's okay. You the na- website name is not the video name. It's two different things. So you know yeah, what? Your yeah. name is amazing. GeraX.co. Yep. They reach out to you and they say, you do. You, how many do you accept? Like if someone says you, oh, I'm selling. I don't know. They have a frother, but it's lame, and it has to. Re- you take it anyway, or you kind of like. Mm. How do you do you like vet and you kind of shoot some away or wh- what's your criteria to accept the job? Yeah, I think um, I turn away more people than I probably should because I'm like focused on, you know, some of the stuff I'm currently selling for myself. Yep. And so that's going to be like my main driver because I know if I can make somebody 400K, I could have made myself a million. That's right. You know, so, but it is fun. Like in reality, if that, that video can take me five minutes because of all the experience of my life, mm-hmm. like building up to this point to make a video that well, I'm like, well, I can just make it in like 10 minutes and I can get yeah. paid out, you know? Yeah, and again, if it makes them 200 grand, it doesn't matter how long it took you to make. Exactly. Right, this is the it this real matter. life, like it real business. Matter. Like, I don't care how much you make. If you yeah. if you get me 200 grand, yeah. bro. And the thing is, sometimes, like, that'll just be for that one integration. And if they want, they can, you know, get the rights to go run it on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, you know, because... All those integrations are mainly within TikTok, like of what. Yeah, we but do. then you can pay TikTok to like, hey, let me take this and take it off the platform, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, by the way, here's a real life ad. Okay, this is a huge viral TikTok creator, and right now he's running a special deal where he'll make a viral video for you, guaranteed, because it's done on RevShare, or you don't pay the guy at all. So check it out. He will be stopping through this soon. Because he's getting so rich on products that he's selling himself. So get it before it sells out because he'll stop doing it. Bam. Uh, Dude, you need to up? do, you need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but that's real. That's my real pitch. I love Click it. Click down below. Yeah. GaraX.co. Thank you. Slash Aaron Cordova. No, I'm kidding. I don't have a landing page. Yeah, no, you could do it. Um, I'll give you no, one. <laughs> okay. Uh, but that's, that's brilliant though. Yeah. Okay. So now what is, what's driving you mm. in business? Why are you doing this? And not just chilling out and being like, yo, I'm making more than 100 grand a year, whatever. Like, I'm chilling. Mm-hmm. What's driving you? Yeah, it's a great question. I feel like it, it changes throughout my life. But um, one of the main things is, like, wanting to retire my parents. Uh, my dad is the one that came over from Mexico. And this guy has just, like, dealt with, like, some of my craziest ideas to, like, filling up his house with, like, pallets of inventory and... I don't know. I get his like his drive for I might my drive from him and my work ethic mm-hmm, from him, mm-hmm. and like him coming into this country has given me the opportunity to do what I do today. So I think like that's one main thing. But also I just love I'm I've always loved freedom and the ability to choose what to do, what I want, mm-hmm. and I really want to create a family with my wife Ashley. And I'm Congrats, like, by the way, I know you recently got married. Thank and you. Ashley's amazing. So she's well done. She's great. Yeah. So I think. I really just like want to be able to spend time with family because when I was a kid, as amazing as my dad was, he was always at work, always hard doing stuff. And I'm like, man, I really missed out on like like close connection with my dad. And I'm like, you know, when you get married, you think about, okay, am I going to run away from what my parents did or am I going to adopt what my parents did? Mm -hmm. And so there's some things that I want to adopt and there's other things that, you know, I just like don't want to do. And one of those things is like, I want to spend like a ton of time with my ch- children when we have some, you know? So like today we spent time with your kids and it was yeah. so much fun. <laughs> nice, yeah. nice. I yeah. hope I influence you. That's a, t- a, no, a recurring you do. theme. You do. Recurring theme on the podcast. Like let's have babies. Really? Because yes. Yes. Because it's the future generation. Who's mm. going to lead the mm. counties, the cities, yeah. the governments? Is it going to be right. some random person who has literally no passion or drive and had a kid by accident? And yeah. honestly, a lot of people that have kids by accident redeem themselves by being great parents. All I'm saying is that you can decide to have a good, close family and make great kids that will be the future leaders. Yeah, People can do that too. And, and personally, for me, I didn't want to have a child. And I was kind of like coerced into it by my wife, honestly. Yeah. And it turned <laughs> out to be one of the best things that happened to me. That's so cool. So, so anyway, I'm glad that you uh, enjoyed... My children. Yeah. And, uh, no, they're great. And, yeah, they're really me, fun. If you ever, if you need any like parenting stuff. I will come to you. I mean, I'm coming to you for <laughs> Amazon stuff yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. parent stuff, probably like give me a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. So, so you want to have kids and you want to be able to spend your, and have freedom. 
Freedom. Have freedom. It's huge. You yeah. You can pick when you want to go, where you want. You can come to Florida whenever you feel like it. Exactly. Yeah. I think when I was in my corporate job for the six months that I was there, like we were on salary and I would get all my work done within the first two to three hours, but they told me I had to be there for eight hours. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this makes zero sense. Mm -hmm. I was like, if I just drove you like a million bucks in revenue for the day or something, I'm like, I want to go home. Like, cause I don't care about, you know, making more money for yeah, it. Yeah. Cause I was on salary. It was weird. I was, I didn't get a commission. Mm. It was, oh. you know, yeah, it was super weird, but I didn't so, know anything back. You know, you know, I think it's interesting cause now do you have employees now or no? You don't I have, do. em you have employees. Okay. Yeah. So, do you give them incentives? Like, again, because it's interesting because I've I'm on, I've been on both sides of this thing where it's like, hey, I've got all my work done and then, yeah. you know, and, and also I have employees. And so it's kind of like, what I like to do is make bonuses where the person will get paid more. Yeah. And that way it's like, you can work the full time and then if you drive it, you bring more. Exactly. As opposed to like, I don't know, when you like, he yeah. did a great job. Can you take the day off? But then is that like enough? I don't know. No. How do you do it with... Do you, do you have, have a certain have style? Editors. How to like do the other side of that? Yeah. So I have editors. I have uh, two content creators right now. So they'll help me because we're doing like 100 ads a week, uh, like for all these companies and stuff. So, you know, I have a couple of editors. I have two content creators. And I tell every single one of them, I'm like, yo, if this hits uh, a certain amount of revenue, you'll get a bonus of X pretty yes. much. So it's... um. It's incentivizing for them because they'll essentially make more money, you know, and I'm like, great, and I'll make more money and like everybody wins. That's right. You know, everybody eats. So incentives and bonuses, but not so much like, hey, I don't know, take the day off or something. That's not so much something you're doing right now. Well, my, I'm very le laid back and very lenient, just like as a person. So um, I'm just like, yo, as long as you get the work done for the week, then like we're chilling. Like if mm -hmm. you want to go, you know, uh, one of my employees, she goes like flies somewhere every week and i'm like she's like oh yeah i'm in you know new york or now i'm in la and i'm like oh cool i was like yeah just make sure to give me that stuff in and she's yeah. great she's a really good employee and i'm like dude if she's happy and she can fly around the country and do what she wants to do and yet she's still a revenue generating employee Correct. then i'm like do whatever the heck you want you know yeah. so i think i got really lucky with the people that i have hired yeah that's great yeah. i mean i think good people also attract good people which is great yeah so that's like a good thing yeah um, okay, cool, man. So, yeah. What are three tips to go viral on TikTok? Mm -hmm. Three three tips to go viral on TikTok. Well, are, am I talking to a business owner? Or am I talking to who am I talking to? How about you give me two for business owners and one for just whatever somebody who wants oh, to someone cut videos. Create they, just, they just want to be. They just want to be, be famous. famous. Okay. So yeah, if you're a business owner, like I think really is showing the BTS, which means behind the scenes. Show the BTS of your company, of what it takes to make, what it looks like to make a milk frother, you mm -hmm. know? Like, so you go to a store, you go to Best Buy, you go to Target, you go to Walmart, you go and grab that product, but there's millions of other products of the same category, same, like, niche. And maybe they have, like, a little picture of them and their family on the packaging or somewhere, but how are you going to connect with that person, like, like, at a human level? Because mm -hmm. there's so much distance between me and Coca-Cola, me and Apple, me and Nike, mm -hmm. you know, for example. Like, I mean, I know Nike's story now after reading Shoe Dog, but like, how do you like create that story? Because we as humans, we're just storytellers. We mm -hmm. connect with people by telling stories. And so that is, would be my number one thing is like, don't necessarily focus on the fact of like trying to go viral, but talk about your story in the most mundane and basic and like, like really relatable way. Like okay. people like to see the wins, but they also like to see the losses. They're like, dude, like, man, I just lost like $60,000 on this inventory because, you know, blank happened or whatever. I'm like, oh man, like, dude, that happened to me, you know, when I, in 2022 or whatever, like, this is cool. This guy's awesome. I'm going to follow him. I want to, you know, follow his journey or follow her journey, mm -hmm. you know? So I would say like more focus on like, how can you tell the story of why you created your product, mm -hmm. why you're like chasing your industry, chasing your brand and why you're building it and people are just going to tag along to that because nice. that's the long-term strategy <clears throat> virality is great it's going to get you a ton of impressions a ton of sales hopefully if you have good call to actions but like i think what people should focus on is more like how can they tell the story of the brand mm -hmm. that they're building people mm -hmm. will get inspired by you all the time people will get inspired by me and I think what's the most important is like you're here on the Aaron Cordova show telling your story, telling stories of other entrepreneurs and people are getting inspired. They're like, man, I really loved, you know, that 
other Amazon guy or I really love that TikTok guy, like I want to go and do that. You know, I've been, you know, working hard for, you know, corporate for a long time and I'm just like tired of giving somebody else's my time, effort and energy. Mm -hmm. Like I want to do something for myself. And like when you can like apply those same, that same energy into your own thing and at the same time, just like post a camera up like on a tripod and tell that story, do a quick voiceover or whatever, people are going to relate. So Love it. Yeah. Love it. Second tip. Second tip for the content creator person. So figure out like what you're already passionate about and like like just go and study other masters, mm. other other uh, creators in that niche, you know? If you like photography and you want to start, you know, growing an audience to like share your world photography skills, then go do that. But I think a lot of people need to give, give, give before they can even take. And a lot of people start their journeys out creating content on like, taking from people versus like giving and so mm. some nobody wants to you know watch a taker people mm. want to like talk to a giver you're giving out all this amazon amazing entrepreneurial fba advice on this free youtube channel it's free so this is why again you should sub right below subscribe <laughs> and like that is like how anybody should like start their content creation journey mm. yeah amazing okay last tip yeah last tip i would say uh, just have fun with it. Yeah, like yes, yeah, <laughs> I love that, boy. Yeah, because I have fun doing what I do. Like it's so much fun. I could, if I wasn't so driven to make a hundred million dollar company, maybe a billion dollar company. Like I, pro I'm set. I'm chilling. I'm. I would be happy with where I'm at. But like, it's it's fun. Like for yes. me, it's fun. Like yes. I, as a kid, I was making dumb, funny videos, whatever. And like still now, I'm making dumb funny videos <laughs> but now i'm like getting paid to do it hell yeah that's i love this viewpoint mm. i love it so much because what are we doing anyway we're, we're all fun. here yeah. when you're a kid you do funny videos yeah do funny videos and get paid for it you yeah. play soccer okay play soccer professionally yeah play do funny soccer videos you like whatever it is i love that idea and i love that you're bringing that passion to the space and that you shared that with our audience mm. and then any final words for people listening to this and and, and thinking hey they could do something online social media drop shipping any of that thing anything right like that. yeah i would just say jump in like i should have jumped in earlier i should have been at full force like immediately because like you can really create anything as long as you just believe it in your mind um yeah so just jump in and do it and make sure you're having fun while doing it hell yeah yeah all right chico and aaron signing out Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can find me Chico Guerra and just C H I C O G U E R R A A on all platforms. You have two A's everywhere, just because yeah, yeah, second. yeah. I know, I know, right? So, but then I have a, a few other accounts, and there's one Chico underscore Guerra on TikTok. I just launched this one two days ago. I'll mainly be talking about just entrepreneurship. Cause, okay, great. Yeah, because on some of my accounts, I do tech reviews and like product reviews. Yeah. So. You probably don't want to watch me get paid. Yeah. You, you know, I'll Chico show you. Chico business. Maybe you call it the Chico biz. Yeah, yeah. Something. But that's where you can find me. So make sure you subscribe, guys. This guy is incredible. He just shares a wealth of knowledge. And I'm so honored and glad to be right next to him. But subscribe. Give this guy some love. And yeah, I'll Let's let you close baby. it. Yeah. All right. Peace. Peace. Good stuff, brother. Let's go. Hell yeah. That was dope. Let's do it. All right. Let's get out of here. Yeah. I'm... <laughs>